welcome to Insight of New England's Therapeutic Talk. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Hi, I'm Candace, and you're watching Insight of New England's Therapeutic Talk. Today I am at, where am I? <laughs> today I am, today we're going to check out the Free Center in Middletown. And we're gonna check out what they do. We're here with Carrie. She is a beautiful woman who does a lot of uh, movement and expressive art and works with a lot of our youth. So we're gonna just kind of look around and see what we have here. And, <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoy. We're excited to be here. So Free Center's in Middletown and it's an arts and wellness space. I believe that access to the arts and alternative wellness programs should be for everyone. And so every program that we offer here is free to the community, which is pretty nice. It is. This is beautiful. Um, we just came today and we're just finishing a yoga class. We have Clarice McDermott who has been in the yoga instructor for how long now? Two years. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. And <laughs> she makes us feel welcome. She makes us feel capable. And she creates a safe space for us all to come in here and grow in our practice. Um, so we have lots of art exhibits going on. We do different programs here. There's a men's group oh. um, the second Monday of every month. There oh. is a spoken word uh, program that goes on here on Fridays. And anybody can come. Because of the COVID, we ask folks to register. But okay. you can see that it's very open, it's open. in here. Yep. Our numbers are limited, but it's open. And it's a really... Um, it's a magical space in here, and uh, I think people that come feel that magic when they come in, that it's for everybody. <laughs> what else can I tell you? <laughs> Want me to tell you about me? Sure, yeah, yeah, oh, God. Okay, <laughs> so, um, for the last uh, almost 20 years, I have been facilitating um, expressive arts residencies in invisible and underserved populations. Um, not many people think about um, how the arts are healing and how movement is connecting your mind and brain and it's all connected. And so I go into different schools, in hospitals, in prisons, um, in retirement communities, and I teach language as a movement as a way to build self-esteem as a way to make connections between your mind and your body, um, and to get some tools to be able to uh, see yourself <laughs> in a different way in the world, with more joy, um, with more self-awareness. So I'm excited that you're here and that we'll be using, yeah. utilizing this space together. Yeah, this is exciting. <laughs> and then we're trying to have, are you gonna have like art shows here? Yep, so we're getting, we just, during this pandemic time, I put out a call to the community to submit anything that they created since March. Um, and the exhibit you see is called Safe Spaces. We all need a safe space, and especially being quarantined and isolated, it's even more important that we find a safe space. Um, and so we're getting ready to open the exhibit on October 16th. And every, yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> hanging and installing it now. Folks submitted um, signs from Black Lives Matter protests. Um, they created different pieces of art. There was music, photography. And so we had over 50 submissions from the community. And so I'm in the process of hanging them, installing them, and so folks can come in and, and learn about their community and the arts that they created during this time. Yeah, we'll have to get some shots. I like yeah. that one over there is nice. Isn't that great? So that artist, Pierre Sullivan, made that one and he made this one here. He usually works in glass and stained glass, but he was always a painter too, and so he created these over the last, um, you know, six yeah. months or so. Um, there's another young man named Lloyd, African-American man here in town, who works at the DMV, but in his spare time, paints. <laughs> and yeah, his work is pretty amazing. Um, that's Andrew, one of the young men that's here from in town. 
He comes to the yoga classes. He attends a lot of the different programs that we offer here for free. And when I put the call out for folks to send something they created, yeah. he had done that self-portrait of himself. I didn't even know he was a painter. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, wow, okay. That's um, nice. <laughs> yeah. And then my daughter Zoe actually made oh. bubblegum one. So she was oh the first God. submission. She, oh. made that. she made that during, um, in March and submitted it. But everything in here is representative of my community. Yeah. Um, my neighbor, she's a seamstress. I had remnant pieces of velvet and she made oh, that unbelievable oh, that's curtain beautiful. for yeah. us to uh, cover the uh, electrical panels. Um, yeah. So, uh, oh, this has been, it's covering a, that. <laughs> this has been a, a labor nice. of love here in community. Um, yeah, let me get a little shot. That little area, this little sitting area is nice. Isn't that great? So this area, well, these chairs were all donated. Um, I work with New Haven Ballet, and I work with kids with disabilities. And during the COVID, they had to close one of their studios. Yeah. So they donated the furniture so that I could have it here. Oh. I mean, it's really been wonderful to uh, see. So we have concerts here. We have small events. Um, when you come in, there's a calendar on the back wall, so you can see what's going on in the month and okay. reserve your spot. You know, the community is going to inform what's happening in here. Uh -huh. um, so that's why it's been left pretty empty, um, but the community will share their gifts and, you know, it'll evolve as we evolve. Uh, grands raising grain. grands right. here too. Right. So grandmas so or grandpas. Yeah, there's so many grandparents that <laughs> right. are raising their grandchildren now. Yeah. And so once a month, um, we've decided that we're going to create a group just for them to come and share yeah. and talk about the experience and yeah. share resources <laughs> and share frustrations and challenges, but also their successes. Yep. So keep that in mind. Yes. <laughs> and also, uh, Carrie is also working with um, Suzanne and I on doing counseling inmates counseling inmates and their loved ones right beautiful right. Right. <laughs> i mean it's important there's um a yeah. disconnect i think in those um families uh and children of incarcerated that have a family member incarcerated right and i think there's a disconnect between um your standard mental health worker or social worker or therapist there's there's a piece of it that gets lost in translation and so the connection that you need to feel in order to trust and open up and um, yep. gather the tools if you don't feel that trust or you don't feel like the person has that understanding of right. where you come from, yeah. um, you're less likely to share everything that you need to share in order to uh, to succeed in your yep. perspectives, you know? It's so hard. I think that's pretty special that we're all working together to provide yeah. that. That's, I mean, these are invisible populations, right. you yep. know? And so, Yep. I'm excited to be working with you and Suzanne to make them less invisible, right? <laughs> with COVID, to amplify. I know with COVID, it's been hard to get it started, but <laughs> this, COVID, I mean, yeah. I think this will be a beautiful place to have it. Oh, definitely. For sure. And definitely. even if we did it by Zoom and like it was just us, Suzanne, and, yeah. and we, yeah. we did it from here yeah. for everybody else. Or maybe a couple people could come. Yeah, I mean, with the, could, because of the space, we're able to be in here and be a far enough from away from right, each other. Right, yeah, it's you open, can. It's wide, the door's open, there's yep. ventilation. Yeah, the door's um, yep. open. word or a speaker here. Um, we mm -hmm. created a little platform to be like a stage. Aww. Um, oh, and so okay. so we designed the room so that well, if you were standing that it had here, like the little step there. everyone yeah. can hear you and see yep. you. Yeah, it's good. It's very cute. <laughs> and then we've got this whole um, the um, black up. Oh yeah, Pierre's piece. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. It's huge. It's, it's interesting that we're still at this time in our lives where we have to talk about mattering, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we have to put it on signs and make put it, it out there. I know, I know. But we do matter. People and don't know. If anything, yeah. 
I want folks to be able to come to a place like this and feel that they matter, yeah. you know, even in a world where you fight to feel like There's you confusion. Do. Yeah. Yeah, there is some confusion. <laughs> Seems to be a paucity of acknowledgement in that. Yeah. I'm trying but. to think what else. Oh, oh, we should talk about how we met. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, so we gosh, that was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. I met about 14 years ago. We were working in a time. residential uh, school, yeah. which was also residential. It was composed of primarily children that had been adjudicated for some reason or a part of the social system, uh, right. DCF system. Yeah. And um, we had a tough group, but I think our time there, we gave a lot of girls the strength and the courage to believe in themselves beyond there. Yeah. Um, I think over the years, both you and I are um, pretty disheartened that we don't know where our girls go anymore. Right. There is no place for girls and boys to go that are troubled, um, um, unless they're in trouble. There's right. no preventative. Yeah, they have to do something. They have to, to get do something help. to get help, which is kind of right. not really help. Yeah. Um, and so I think our goal in reconnecting after all these years <laughs> is to come up with some preventative programming right. um, that will help um, yeah. these young men and women uh, be able to soar in their life. Yeah. Um, easier um, and with the tools and so spaces yeah. like this are going to be helpful for that. It definitely. I think another thing that's interesting, we both have community psychology degrees. I know. So. <laughs> and people go, what is that? And I'm like, well, you just widen the lens. Yes, we are therapists and can direct ourselves to right. one person or a small group, yeah. but it's only when you widen the lens that you can see the fissures yeah. and be able to make real change in right. organizations and systems. Yeah. And, um, I think you would agree, yep. if I don't speak, I don't know if I'm talking out of turn, but I think <laughs> you would agree that when you widen the lens yep. and you look, there's usually what needs to change is usually up here and not here yeah. where the people are. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and not many yeah. people want to hear that, no. not organizations, no. you know? No. But um, so as much and as important as our work is, we're, we're not always welcomed. Our, our, it's not always welcomed because we expose places in systemic um, right. yeah. uh, challenges yeah. that you know, aren't easy to fix. No, it's things that people don't really want to look at and maybe the funding isn't where it actually should be. So people don't really want to address where the funding should really be. Exactly. <laughs> to prevent. Exactly. They'd rather just put out fires. Right. Basically. Right. And that actually costs more. The communities more money. <laughs> it costs so. money. It costs um, emotional well being. Yes. It costs lives. Um, and so maybe you and I will end up saving the world and <laughs> turning it around so that. Heal the world. Hey, we're going to heal the Quote world. From Michael Jackson. One YouTube video <laughs> at a time. We're going to do it. You know? Um, it's important. I think our work is important, and I think that um, I think that smart organizations and institutions right. would utilize us and yeah. uh, value us more. And yeah. So until then, we work with the little by little, little by little, <laughs> right? Because it's root causes. Nobody wants to go to the roots, you know. That's what the yeah. uh, that's what the challenge is. is uncovering, exploring, discovering yep. ways that um, as an organization you can make it better. And sometimes yeah. that requires looking at yourself. Yourself, yeah. <laughs> and your system. And yep. your, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. So we're, it's exciting work. It's challenging work. But I think the rewards are <laughs> in the people that we help, you know. Mm -hmm. I know for me, seeing some of the young women men that we worked with 15 years ago, because we never know where anybody ends up. There's no right. way, you know, we don't see them once right. they no. leave us. But on the rare occasion that I see one of our young men or women <laughs> and they're soaring and they say, oh, I have an apartment now. And, right. Or know, they went to college. Or they went to college. I had a couple. Yeah, I'm not I homeless. actually went to school. Yeah. yeah you know. <laughs> actually have a job. <laughs> I have a job. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, 
Um, <laughs> I feel honored and um, pretty special to be able to share time and space with you. Yeah. Always. Oh. Always. <laughs> always. Always, always. <laughs> and we got great things coming here. Yep. I think this pandemic has forced folks to uh, shift their thinking. Right. And so yep. I think as um, terrible as, as it is that we're living through a pandemic, it's offered another perspective on how we can continue to right. do better. Yeah. Yep. For sure. For our people, Definitely. for ourselves. Yep. You know? And that all these different organizations, whether they're social organizations, you know, social organizations, health organizations, nonprofit organizations, I think this has made us all realize that you can't work alone, that we're right. all going to have to work we're together. All gonna, yep. <laughs> yeah. We can't do it alone, you know? It always sounded yeah. good two years ago, yeah. but it never really happened, and now yeah. we don't really have a choice. Yeah. You know? yep. And I'm cool with that because I've always <laughs> believed Nobody in working together, now. right? <laughs> They're going to have to be a community now. You're going to have to. No choice. There's no I in team. There's no I in team. Exactly. Exactly. I'm glad you came here today. I'm glad too. Yeah. Secrets take up a lot of space in a body, and especially a little mm -hmm. body. And um, the more opportunities kids who are struggling with stuff at home, yeah. um, have an opportunity to share that and not have a secret, I think in the long run, everybody's gonna do yeah. better and soar because secrets take up a lot of space. Yeah, like the work that, that you were doing with the girls when we were working with the girls, and it was such an emotional experience that they transitioned through. Like they went from telling us to F off to <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> running and screaming down the halls, having crisis, to get into class and <laughs> writing in a journal and tears, you know, coming out and I mean the performance just, that they gave at the end of that was yeah. incredible. And I remember at the talk back, we were asking the, you know, what did you learn or what's different now than when before we began this program? And I remember um, one of the young women saying, I never realized how many of these girls that I spend so much time with have had the same struggles as I have. That right. we're actually a lot more similar than we than thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you know the body map exercise was incredible. The yeah. one woman that the young girl that didn't want to do it at all, didn't want to do it at all, didn't want to do it at all, <laughs> and then asked another girl if she could have her body map. Right. And I, remember, I remember the teacher saying, "You can't have that one. That's not yours." And I said, well, if she wants to have it, give it to her. <laughs> right. And what we, what we came to realize was that she didn't want her body. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so Aww. that's that part where there's a disconnect, yeah. you know, and always instead of trying to meet kids where, where they're they at, are. have right. this, like, this um, template made. Yeah. And not everybody fits in that. No. And, you know, yeah. she was so funny. She didn't want, she didn't do anything, but she came to class. She didn't want to do anything. I think I remember and she who was the about first now. person <laughs> yeah. to show up for the performance. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, ah. I mean, there were so many really small yeah. moments in that time that we spent together that ended up being huge and monumental right. and, and transformative for all of us, I think. Me as a as a person <laughs> that facilitates right. it. Um, the girls. The girls for sure. The girls for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's so, very moving. It was moving. It still like brings tears. I know. Well, it's so funny that day I said, "Oh it? my goodness, I've been with these the girls tears. every day, and I'm crying like I just saw this performance for the first time." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they were they were amazing. They really were. Yeah, I'll never forget it. I don't think they've forgotten it either. I don't think so either. No, we no. need more of that. Yep. We need more spaces that are safe for yep. our young people to express, to give voice to their struggles, yep. and to gather tools um, to understand that you can't change what's happened to you, but you can change how you react to right. it. You know? yep. And I think that's really important, and yep. I think that um, we need more of that in our schools yep. um, and in places where our children are. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, expressive art is powerful. I know. And the writing, <laughs> I mean, it's so we had lyricists, we had everything yeah. that day. Songs. I remember the one, we had everybody finish the sentence, my, my mother, mother taught me. Yeah. Yep. And the responses, I mean, the one young woman that said, my mother taught me how to wet the broom to pick up the shards of glass after fighting with my yeah. dad. You just sit and yeah. you hold that and pause in that, you know? Yeah. My mother taught me how to smile, how to smile through the pain. Yeah. Those were honest and those were yeah. real responses. Ones that you and I could have never come up with. No, yeah. Unless you yeah. lived that. Yeah, yeah. You know? so it resonates it's with it's you. Yep. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny, every time I break a glass, I think about her when I'm sweeping it. Yeah. Don't make me cry oh, right now. Can <laughs> <laughs> mean remember? I, know. I think it was it was the same girl that said like my mother didn't want me. She didn't. Yeah. yeah. She wrote the song that said never again. Oh yeah. Never again yeah. will you mistreat me. Never again will you not hear me when yeah. I cry. Never again will you leave me, deceive me. Never again. Yeah. And it's crazy how you remember every single <laughs> of it. You know? It's it was so really moving. It was moving. Yep. I mean, we opened up that show with the F you. <laughs> they had said F you to us so many times. I'm like, let's make it a Carrie dance. I was like, let's make a dance now. <laughs> when you come out on that stage, you can't say it. As the DCF worker, your guardian of litem, the teacher, the administrator. Everybody has a movement that says this. <laughs> Come out and do it. And they did it. Oh, we'll have to play that recording. Again. We'll have to go back and remember the day. I know. And then that song at the end, we had everybody tie. Um, we yeah. had everybody tie a scarf around where they held their pain. Yeah. And so when they came out at the end and you saw the different places where they held, where they had tied that yeah. scarf, and then they sang, um, and then they moved to that, that um, Melissa Etheridge yeah, song, they, yeah. and took that it off beautiful. and threw it in the middle at yeah. the end. And the chain, what is it, the chains? So they were locked up. Yeah, locked so up. Yeah. That's when we were all in the ropes. Because this is like a form of incarceration for these girls. So, it is. Yeah, it so is. they're already incarcerated at a young age in the system. You this can't the make truth. it up. It's the truth. They put me on a hold. I called in a crisis and got a voice. <laughs> rang, rang. <laughs> rang, rang. I mean, we don't punish our babies very well, you know? They need us. They need our programming. They need spaces right, right. to soar in their understanding of who they are and that what's happened to you isn't, doesn't define you, you right. know? It builds character, certainly. Um, but, yeah. yeah. It, it breaks my heart that I can't really find any um, residential treatment. Right now. So, uh, oh, well, there, yeah, yeah, right. Where do our babies go right. now? Yeah. I don't know. Most of the residential treatment like centers possible. that I've always worked at are now, are now their capacities are filled with children with intellectual disabilities. Right. You know, and it says, okay, well, I can't imagine that troubled children stopped being troubled. Right. <laughs> Did everybody yeah, just figure they, it out? They just got better. <laughs> they just all got better. Right? And, they said, and so then you look at the dollars on that. Where's the higher dollars go? Higher dollars go to children with more um, disabilities. Right. Whereas when there's behavioral. behavioral stuff going right. on, there's not a lot of money in that. No. And unfortunately, no. Um, our kids suffer the most for that. Right. And the families, because they can't get the services. Yeah. I've spoken to so many mothers and fathers who need services for their child and just resources and just can't access them they're, they're not just there. not they're not available i so. was looking i remember i was it's looking just... for a program i forget it was a, a program for young kids for therapy or wellness and someone told me to call 211 oh so i gosh. said i'm gonna call 211 i'm gonna try this 
Call 211. <laughs> that was funny. Now, I <laughs> like to think I'm pretty intelligent, pretty capable of navigating a 211 call. I could not get one person on the phone. No. So I can't imagine not having the skill set to navigate online. Right. Yeah, yeah. And what if you don't have online? Right. Yeah. Or if you don't have because minutes a lot on your phone. Of, a right. lot of people run out of minutes. Right. I, I'm not going to use my minutes to yep. stay on hold to be transferred to who? Right. To where? <laughs> Yeah, it was really frustrating. It's very frustrating. And I mean, I know resources, but I right. couldn't get any that day. No, two on one is it's really hard. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, especially now because there's a lot of hold time. Yeah, I remember one of my my uh, young women that I worked with. She says to me, "I'm so upset." I said, "What? What's the matter?" She said, "You know, she has an eating disorder." She said, and I called Overeaters Anonymous, and they oh. put me on hold. Oh, no. For, for a long time. Yeah. We need to do better by our community. <laughs> right, Our yeah. communities of children that are going to grow up and take care of us. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you know? They need the tools. They yeah. need the skills. They need the spaces that afford them the opportunity to, to be mm -hmm. and soar in that new um, understanding of who they are. Yeah. We all do better when we walk around confident, even if we're faking it. it <laughs> uh, and yeah. your body naturally yeah. clicks in and says, yeah. oh, well, I am pretty confident. Yeah. I do feel Everything's good. good. Yeah. Everything is great. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I always say, and the worst days, if you find three reasons to have gratitude, those three can get you through that next hour. And then you find three more. You look around, the sun is shining. Little simple things, yeah. you know? And so I try to impress that and uh, give that to the folks that I work with. Mm -hmm. We can't change all the no. stuff. Right. That we've all had right. to deal with, yeah. right? We can't change no. it. And if you try to figure out, well, how could I wish, I wish, you know, how am I going to change my reaction to it? Right. Because the reaction is what's holding me back. Right. Yeah. Like molasses. And, and planning for the future because it doesn't have to stay that way. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm so proud. One of the young girl that came here to Free Center to get some help with figuring out how to um, amplify her business. She makes cupcakes and these amazing cupcakes. Oh, yummy. And she came in, <laughs> I know, I was like, well, you can bring samples. But she came in and she says, I was a foster kid. I was in and out of jail. Oh, my parents are in jail. I've been working for nothing. I have these kids. I've got problems, but I wanted something else. And so I knew that I made an unbelievable cupcake. And so she came in and Aww. looking for um, someone to help encourage her and help guide her or give her the tools to figure out how she can maybe be the master cupcake person. And now I see she's got a little Instagram page. Nice. She does little birthday <laughs> parties, you know, and they're good. They're good. Yeah. You know? they're good and they're not $5 good cupcakes, but right. you know what I mean? Yeah. They're affordable. They're right. accessible. Accessible <laughs> cupcakes. What's better than that, right? So... So yeah, I mean, if we all give a little bit to each other, there's strength in numbers, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just slowing down enough to uh, notice mm -hmm. your gifts, you know? Because we all have them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just need somebody to take five minutes to learn what they are <laughs> so you can share. <laughs> Free center! <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to see you again soon. We will be seeing more of Carrie and future videos. And uh, I hope that everybody learns something and takes something away from it. And if you're in the area, um, maybe checking it out on 
Facebook or checking it out to see what events are coming up. There is going to be the art show and they have the yoga and all of those things that are offered there um, that are free to the community. So um, please feel free to check that out. Um, everybody is safe. I hope that everybody is well. I hope that peace and love is upon you at all times. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Remember